three, two, one. Yo, people, peace and prosperity, and welcome back to More Valuable Voices with Jimmy Pace. Have a very special guest with me today. We've got Zoe from Naturally Untamed. Thank Hi. you for being here. Thank I appreciate you. it. All right, we're going to get straight into it. Um, I love that name, Naturally Untamed. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so uh, first of all, obviously, natural. Uh, when we say natural, are we talking like, you know, no makeup natural, or are we talking. Yeah. yeah, funny enough, <laughs> Naturally Untamed, I feel like it, it describes not only my business um, mm -hmm. and what I do, which is, you know, herbal medicine, mm -hmm. um, but I feel like it just describes myself because in general, I am very, I don't know, I've just always been very natural, not into makeup, stuff like that, you know, very, very much like, <laughs> very much like to the core, all of that, so um, even when I was trying to... Um, come up with a name for my business mm -hmm. um i was okay yeah you had to have like natural in it because that was described in my business 100%. but also like untamed because i feel like not only that's you know it describes plants you know plants you mm -hmm. know they grow in the wild they're very untamed you can't really control them yeah. but it also describes me because i feel like i'm always like on to the next thing i'm always growing like i'm mm -hmm. very untamed like my character is like that so I love that. it kind of you know naturally untamed is my business but it's, it's zoe oh, so, i yeah. had that i love that story it's fierce so feisty that's what i like today yeah. you know what i'm saying and it's good to know that i can talk about <laughs> natural no makeup and then obviously yeah. don't get you know bash it because i get bash kind of things you get because yeah, yeah, yeah. i went to the natural all of it. i like everything natural do you know what yeah. i'm trying to say so um, yeah, so again, thanks for coming on and it's going to be a great one. Obviously, we always have guests on here of substance and, you know, you're definitely one of them. So we're going to get straight into it and, um, yeah, we'll talk about Naturally Untamed. So talk to us about what it is and, you know, what it means to be a medical herbalist and a product formulator. Yeah. Right? Quite right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, I'll talk more about being a medical herbalist because I feel like being a product formulator kind of comes under that. Um, so Naturally Untamed um, is my company, um, I'm a qualified medical herbalist and a medical herbalist is somebody that um, uses plants to, as medicine, so they're qualified, they're trained in plant medicine. Um, and I did, I did a degree um, at the University of Westminster, um, it was four years, um, and it was heavily science and medical based, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's basically, you learn about you know, I had to do like biochemistry, physiology, so all about like the body and um, how the body works and the structure of the body and how diseases work in the body. But then also, um, yeah, I had to learn about diseases, how to diagnose, okay. um, how to physically examine the body. And then on the other side, it's like learning about plants and herbs. So, um, you know, learning about in general the structure of plants mm -hmm. but also uh, traditional historical uses of the plant scientific um, uses and scientific studies um, and how to use it as medicine and prescribe herbs um, in a safe manner so i'm a herbal practitioner so i'm qualified to take patients um and okay. yeah the same way that you kind of go to a doctor i was gonna say you to a doctor is already your name no 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 legally that's not allowed no legally that's not allowed no okay because I'm, I'm not a doctor but um I had to do a lot of what kind of what GPs kind of have to learn. Yeah. So I'm trained to the level of like a GP, but then obviously we have to also learn about um, the herbal side of it mm. um, and how to prescribe safely as well. Because thing, I think yeah. people think that herbs are very like wishy washy, like oh herbal medicine is not real, and, yeah, and it's yeah, like yeah. well actually that's our history, you mm. know, like before the evolution of medicine 100%. and where we are today, like the world. And still, in some parts of the yeah. world, they use plants for medicine. Definitely. And a lot of medicine as well is derived from plants as well. So, yeah, that's basically what I do. Um, mm -hmm. And um, part of being a herbalist, so I have a private um, herbal medicine practice. So I see clients one-on-one, -on -one, support them for medical conditions. Um, I also uh, make my own products. So, yeah, so I, I make my own products. I wow. use natural ingredients. I use herbs. I, I, I like to infuse herbs in, like, oils. and. Yeah. Um, and then I make my own products, I sell them, and then also I um, teach workshops as well, educational workshops mm -hmm. to children and adults. Yeah, we're going to get all into that, that yeah. proper dive deep into that, but that's, that's actually inspirational as well to, to, to know that obviously we're going to basic, you're going to basically like the core exactly. of earth, you know what I'm trying to say, and these are like natural things that you know we grow, we set all around us exactly. in our garden, you feel me? And yeah. it kind of is kind of like that battle <laughs> with like 
doctor, I say, was it doctor, that doctors, and then obviously what yeah. you're doing, because there's a lot of people that will go medicinal because, I guess, I wouldn't say brainwashed, but near enough, you've kind of been brainwashed, they know this different thing, everything, medicine, yeah. but they only look at it, medicine. yeah, exactly, so they only look at it in one, one that region, rather than obviously the herbal. And I feel like, just to like touch on that as well, I think um, definitely like, medicine and pharmaceuticals they do have a place because mm -hmm. um there is you know there are there's been a lot of evolution and it has helped a lot of people mm -hmm. um and a lot of patients that come to me as well they are on medication so it's kind of it's not like it's one or the other um, they both coexist. yeah they can coexist oh, okay. and i feel like herbal medicine is really good as a support for people that are on medications because mm -hmm. um a lot of people you know with with medicines and pharmaceuticals, a lot of the time it's just to kind of help with the symptoms um, rather than get into the root core yeah, of like yeah. what their problem is. And that's where we come in, we're trying to like figure out the underlying causes um, and treat the whole body rather than just, oh, you have a headache, I'm treating you for the headache. Yeah, Do you know yeah, what I mean? Okay, it's yeah, like, yeah. we're looking at your whole life, your whole body, what's going on and trying to like find links as well. That's good. Yeah. That's really good. What I did like as well was, um, where you were like, oh, we don't just treat, uh, you know, we don't just treat like the outer, we just, you know, the, the inner yeah. as well. I love that because obviously, you know, a lot of work is, you know, you mm -hmm. understand, we, we have to literally be curing what's inside because obviously anything that happens outside of us, obviously there's a reason it, it exactly. probably did come from inside, yeah, you understand, yeah. so I did, I did like that. Yeah. Um, do you want to touch on that a bit more as well as in like, obviously, what uh, your medicine kind of, tackles in the sense of like the inner and the outer yeah i mean in general um there's herbs for all like all the systems of the body so like the heart the lungs the mm. stomach you know the nervous system mm. um and that's you know what we've like studied um and how to like why when would you need to address this or when would you need to address that and what herbs work better because yeah, yeah there might be certain herbs let's say for the skin for example because yeah. a lot of people have a lot of skin problems um, there are a lot of herbs that are good for the skin, but actually some herbs work better for certain conditions and some herbs work better for other things because of their actions in the body. Yeah. And um, like I think an example yeah, for like skin conditions is like sometimes a topical product is not enough. You know, and I will say that even for, you know, I make products, um, but I would say if you have something like a chronic illness, you've had years of eczema, yeah. to be honest, putting a cream in your skin, it might help symptomatically, it might help relieve like inflammation and irritation and stuff, but you need to start working inside, so you might need to fix up your diet, yeah, your gut, awesome. there's a lot of gut problems, a lot okay. of people that have like skin problems tend to have gut problems, okay. um, you might need to you know, work on lymphatic drainage and work on the liver, so liver, you know, it detoxifies everything from your body and then it allows um, the elimination of you know, excess toxins or hormones mm -hmm. so we really like address you know is it a hormonal problem is it a, a gut problem is it a nervous system problem is it because you're stressed and you're um, anxious so that's kind of the yeah the correlation between outside and inside mm -hmm. and how your symptoms manifesting and also like people that tend to have longer like m many years of a condition especially the skin condition yeah. it means it's really really deep rooted in the body you know so you really need to kind of do a lot of work internally uh, i love that still because it's like it's not just like you said you're not it's not surface level stuff here that we're not talking no. surface level stuff and a lot of things in this day and age are just surface level like, like yeah. you're talking about that like, headache okay i'll just give you this like, exactly. you like, instead of like really digging deeper to see okay so what are you what is causing these headaches to come exactly. about you understand and a lot of people don't really understand that and that's not even just in like medical terms that's just in life terms as well do you get yeah. like we just have to not everything's just surface level yeah you understand? and that's and i think that's where herbal medicine is really important and mm. there, there's a need for an alternative because um a lot of people that seek out herbal medicine is actually they've gone through you know years of you know being passed on from doctor to doctor mm -hmm. they've had referrals they've they've been on medications and they're not seeing results and they're desperate they're trying to find an alternative and it's kind of like a last resort yeah, um yeah. and yeah that's that's where we come in um and it can be really helpful yeah 100 100%. 100%, because another thing as well is that uh, i do think that 
it's the information, obviously, um, for like, obviously, say, you know, um, herbal medicines. Mm -hmm. The information, when, where, where people are not like armed with that uh, knowledge, mm -hmm. like off the bat, do you understand, where we're armed with everything else, it's, it's quite hard for people to kind of just like go towards that, you understand, and this yeah. is why, obviously, you know, most valuable voice is this platform is important because I like to just shed light on all of them mm -hmm. things, you understand, because it makes people think, you know, outside the box and it makes them think like, oh, right, like, I, was, I was looking into that, but now then you're here yeah. explaining it fully, do you yeah. understand? And that's, and that's, I think, like, my mission with my business and what I'm doing is that, you know, I have three different avenues um, mm -hmm. for my business. So, as I said, I have my products where you can just buy something over the counter. That's usually cosmetic products. Mm -hmm. um, you have, you know, the one-on-one -on -one support. So, that's for people that really, you know, need that one-on-one -on -one support. Because yeah. not everyone needs one-on-one -on -one support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not everyone can afford as well to have that regular monthly, you know, mm -hmm. check-ins check and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then also education. So I, I'm really, I believe really strongly in, you know, reconnecting people with this herbal knowledge because, you know, this is, this was basic knowledge, you know, older generations especially, yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like a thing where you would learn from your grandma, yep. you know, certain remedies and, and things about plants. And, and I think when, because we live in a, um, a city as well, yeah, 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 yeah. we're really disconnected. 100%. And I, and I feel like it's important to start reconnecting people with the knowledge of herbal medicine, especially like since the pandemic as well, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people felt vulnerable. Um, they felt like they were, you know, they were too scared. Mm -hmm. They were going to get ill. They thought they were going to die. And, and there was a lot of emphasis on, you know, masks, social distancing, overly sanitizing and everything, which was good. But to they, be a bit basic. Yeah, but there could be there could be more like information on how to look after yourself yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know using kitchen ingredients like with your one hour daily walk that you had to do, you know, there's plants, there's medicine that's in the in the parks. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're really powerful medicines. And if you know how to identify them and you know how to safely use them, mm -hmm. then you know it can help you for boosting your immune system. But also like minor like ailments, you know, something that you would just call up the doctor for, you could figure it out yeah, yourself. So, 100%. so yeah, especially like during a time as well when like there was very limited to um, access to healthcare. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's like my mission, and it's it's trying to like re-educate people, reconnect them, and especially children as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Introduce them from young, so it's normal 100%. when they grow up. Because they're yeah, children are sponges, so yeah. you need to get them at that stage so they're just taking that all in, exactly. so it's like second nature to them. Yeah. Which is good. We're gonna definitely get into that uh, with the workshops and the children yeah. as well and all of that stuff. Um so I wanna take it back now. Like yeah. take it back, take it back, take it back. So that uh, what stage in your life did you decide that you wanted to do this? Um I was a very fussy child, so I didn't like the taste of medicine, you know? Um, I think the typical thing was like cowpox. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like there's, there's a divide, there's a divide. There's some, there's some kids that love it. They, yeah. My little brother, he loved it. He would beg for, you know, yeah, 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 to yeah, have yeah. cowpox. At me, I could not stand it. I was just, just because of taste and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think because of that, I grew up, you know, with the mentality that, oh, it's okay, I don't need medicine, I'm okay, I'm okay. Um, and as a teenager, I started to get interested in like natural remedies and stuff like that. And I think even like with, um, you know, sensitive skin or spots um, and, you know, hair stuff, um, as a teenager, I wanted to, I started using like different ingredients mm -hmm. um, to like make little concoctions. Um, but, you know, herbal medicine wasn't really like on my radar. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was going to actually say that as well. I was thinking like, did you start like identify and seeing like people's skin problems and then there's no. that kind of what yeah okay. no like so that was just like i was just interested in you know mixing ingredients yeah, you know yeah. food stuff like yeah. yogurt and avocado and this to make a hair mask or something you know okay, stuff like okay, that or okay. i don't know and then um yo people peace and prosperity this is your most valuable versus team and this episode is sponsored by tax free Yes, you know we have to do it for the culture, so that's why we're bringing you an exclusive discount 15% called MVV. Mm -hmm. Found in the link in the description below. Go there, copy yours, and be ready. Yes, that is MVV15. When you go on the website to copy your drip, type that in 15%. Yeah, let's get it. I 
after sixth form college, um, I did a volunteering placement in India for a year. Okay, nice. Um, and I had also applied for uni, but I was going to do something completely different. Um, I was, um, I still am, but I was really interested in like language, culture. So I was going to do um, social anthropology, linguistics, and like do a language at uni. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually didn't get into uni um, because I didn't get the entry requirements. Okay. Um, yeah, so my plan was I was doing my year year uh, volunteering placement. I was going to come back and go to uni, but it was kind of like a little limbo because okay, I didn't get in. I'm going to have to reapply. Yeah. Um, and anyway, whilst I was out there, um, just like talking to different people, you know, sharing interests and kind of just seeing as well that they have like a whole medical system that's very herbal and natural, and it's mm -hmm. called Ayurveda. So Ayurveda is um, an ancient Indian medical well, was this in Yeah, yeah okay, this okay, is in okay. India. Mm -hmm. So I was like learning about this. I was like seeing, I was like, oh, this is interesting. And what intrigued me was because my interest of topical remedies, so mm -hmm. things with the skin, yeah, hair, yeah. stuff like yeah. that, and, and Ayurvedic medicine uses a lot of topical uh, medicines. Okay. So they would so do, related. yeah, they mm -hmm. would do like herbal infused oils and do a lot of massage for medicine. and you know, baths and stuff like that and that really fascinated me and I think it was my first introduction to plant medicine and I was like, I want to study this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I want to study Ayurvedic medicine and so I started searching um, like back home and in London I was like searching for Ayurvedic degrees um, and there wasn't a degree a degree in Ayurveda yeah. but there was a degree in Western Herbal Medicine. Okay. So I was like, yeah, no need, like, I'm going to apply for this, this is what I want to do. Um, so that was, yeah, that was kind of how I got into it. Um, so, yeah. so basically, you know, that was fake in a sense. It was like, ah, you didn't get into uni, but then no, you found honestly. inspiration in Indian. And then... Yeah, honestly, and it's, it's so funny as well because I didn't even want to go to India. So with this charity, um, you could choose, like you could choose like your top three countries of where you want to be placed mm. and then they select it for you, like okay. where you, according to, like you go on like training and the selection process um, and then they choose like where you'd be best suited. I wanted to go to South America, I, I, didn't, I didn't want to do, yeah, and then they and then they decided to like, yeah, send me to India and at first I was like, oh, that's not what I wanted to do, but it's crazy how like things work out because if I didn't do that, then I wouldn't have been introduced to this, yeah. yeah. That's how the universe works as well. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like one door closes, you might not want to do something, but it puts you there in a, in a sense uncomfortable position yeah. and then because you're there, you know, you find your purpose yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. That's really sick so, Um Okay, cool. So so that's so so that was the pinnacle of when that all started. Yeah. So when you were like bef before that, younger than that, what because everyone has the thing that, especially like, say, man, they, they would have that, yeah, I want to be a footballer. Before yeah. anything they're doing now, I want to be a footballer. Yeah, until, yeah. until it's like, mm, all right, cool, that man. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Then they do something else. So what was your kind of... I think as a child, as a yeah. kid, I, only, I think I wanted to be a teacher. Okay. Um, well, you, you technically... I know, technically yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah, teacher, and yeah. I, I've kind of had a lot of different experience with teaching throughout years, like, mm. in different fields. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I feel like as a child, I was like, yeah, I want to be a teacher. Yeah. Uh, but then like in school, like secondary school, I wasn't thinking about being a teacher. Uh, and that's why actually when I was in sixth form college and I was starting, you have to start thinking about uni and what you want to do. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, but at the same time, I knew that I was really good at languages and I was really interested in languages. And I was really interested in, um, I, I was starting to... Uh, develop more of a deep appreciation for like my own culture mm -hmm. and my own language. So I'm Italian and Irish. Okay. Um, and I was starting to understand, um, just have a deeper understanding about like even my language and, and, and our dialects mm. and how influence of different cultures through history have had an influence on language and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, it was, it was very complex, but that's how I started to get into like anthropology and yeah, yeah, linguistics yeah. because that was really fascinating to me and I thought I was going to do that, yeah. um, but I didn't. But I'm really <laughs> glad that I did. Yeah. 100%. But that's good that even you um, have that like, initiative to, I don't know if you call it intuitive or would you just call it like, you know, you're quite, um, you have like an intriguing personality in the sense of like, Curious, I should say. Yeah. So you're curious about certain things, and then that would make you go and you know dig deeper into it and try to find out more about yeah. it kind of thing. I would also say as well. I just I just remembered 
when I was like in secondary school, I was um, I was a dancer, so I did street dance. I was doing world championships. I had I was in a group and everything. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, there was a period of time I thought that I was going to be a dancer. I was like, yeah, I'm going to be a professional dancer. I'm going to teach dance and yeah, and all of that. And yeah, that didn't happen. But yeah. Yeah, no, nah, that's how it goes as well. It's like obviously, even me, I went to be footballer. Went that route, obviously rapper route, I'm a rapper. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to, but realistically, I wanted to literally be like a journalist, like mm -hmm. from young. Like, yeah, like, but this is kind of like journalism in the sense that, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, but the thing with me, which deterred me from that, is I'm, a, I'm like a very like natural person, so I don't like, like, in that in that job of IE, like journalism, yeah. newspaper work, and I saw a lot of movies, I saw a lot of like, you know yeah. things and i see the way journalists are and what they do in order to go get what they need to get and yeah. i'm thinking, i'm just not cut out for that i'm yeah, not that yeah, guy yeah. that i, I yeah. can't push like more than i need to push i just mm. like things naturally and i don't like to like you know sell myself short for anything yeah know? so you know but again everything works its way around exactly. and it's like oh well you know i have my own talk show let me go and do my own journalism exactly. on my terms exactly. yeah so yeah, yeah, yeah. it always kind of works around anyway yeah. <laughs> um yeah, so your your degree that you got, uh, so what what's what's the name of that your degree that you So my degree was herbal medicine. Herbal medicine, okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, so how did that like having a degree like translate into like the real world? Because you see where people will be like, Oh I went uni and this doesn't mean anything and da 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 da, yeah. da. so how did that kinda of, that like, translate in, yeah. into like, you know, work or, you know, money finances whatever like, yes. kind of um i'm very blessed in the sense that the degree that i did was it was to train me to be a qualified herbal practitioner mm. so as part of the degree you have to undergo like um 500 clinical hours okay. so um if you want to practice if you want to go into practice you have to complete um under certain you know professional bodies um, in this country you have to undergo 500 clinical hours um, so for three years we actually there was a clinic um, next to the university um, and real patients would come and it was like a student clinic yeah, yeah, yeah. so in our first year you just observe you just sit in you watch you know the the older years um, take the consult consultation mm -hmm. Um, and then in your second year you start to take patients under supervision and then the, the supervisor would then take over the consultation afterwards and cover anything that you didn't cover mm -hmm. and then in your final year you're kind of like given control where okay. you do uh, you take the whole consultation you prescribe you come up with the herbal prescriptions um, and it's a bit more you have a bit more decision uh, control in that the decision making yeah, yeah. Um, but obviously on top of all of this, you also have to do like clinical practice. So you have to learn how to diagnose. Mm -hmm. You have to learn how to um, physically examine the body and like literally learn how to diagnose by feeling and you know, yeah. so heart okay. examination, yeah, yeah. lungs and gut. So we're really, really trained and it's, it's really intense actually. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's really sense, intense. Yeah. Um, so by the time I finished uni, I was qualified. I could go into practice and as well at the end of my at the in our final year we have a module on starting your own practice so they help you uh, they give you advice on you know how to start a business and how to um, just open up your practice and, and finances and that kind of stuff so that's actually good that really you know good, yeah, yeah they gave you got them um, you know tips because yeah. you know a lot of um a lot of like say courses or classes yeah. or whatever and once you're finished they don't really give you the what's next you know what i'm yeah. trying to say they kind of just like you know i think it's the, i think <laughs> it, yeah literally yeah, yeah. and i think it's because like being a herbalist you're very independent you kind of work alone mm. um is it quite niche um or? there's literally there was like no more than 30 people on my course and like there's other courses that were like hundreds and hundreds okay. i was like the youngest person on my course a yeah. lot of the people that were there were like they're doing like they're starting careers all over again they're yeah, like yeah. 40s and 50s and they decided to just do a whole okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um and yeah so i think it is very particular there's not many people there's not many courses and mm. actually my course has actually i think it's shut down now like it is in the last years um 
due to what that uh, lack of people no like lack of funding like they didn't want to fund it anymore stuff like that they don't want to fund it because the guy that gets it's like it's yeah. like the NHS versus that in a sense yeah and I think I, I don't yeah I don't know there's other schools that are now like opening up so there's I think there was like a couple in the country mm. uh, but slowly slowly yeah they were shut down and then now there's kind of more opening up so yeah but it's really a small small thing mm. but yeah, and just to finish off with like the question that you asked, yeah. Um, yeah, so I could, I didn't have to look for a job afterwards, like I didn't have to ask someone to employ me, mm. um, although I think that would be very helpful because <laughs> starting a business and, yeah. and just being, going into practice, you have to build your client base, yeah, 100%. so it's not like you finish uni and then bam, you're in business yeah, full yeah, yeah. time and no, Put so, that groundwork in straight away, yeah, yeah, so it's still a work in progress, I feel like I am doing this full time, yeah. um, but it is a struggle, and it's just about like building my clients yeah. and you know building, you know, getting my products out there and doing other things as well. Okay, so, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's good still because yeah, because at the end of the day, I think when we talk about obviously opportunities, like a boss, you're like, yeah, I obviously I've just, you know, worked my thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've got yeah, my yeah. thing and that's cool. I yeah. didn't need to get um, get given an opportunity, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And to be honest, I will, I will personally like, think that's better in a sense, even though obviously the whole starting of starting something yeah. is long, it's tiring, it's, it's draining, it's, it's, it's obviously weight bearing on your pockets, yeah. all of them things you understand, however, I just the feel long term. the long term, exactly, yeah. that's Short that's term thing. is a bit of a struggle when you're yeah. seeing people that, they do get like graduate jobs, or, or just in general, they're just in a full time job and you know, you're getting a good salary, yeah, 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 um, yeah. and it's kind of like, I've kind of like sacrificed that mm. to make this grow, and I know 100%. that like, I know it will get there, and I know that it will be even better, you know, um, so yeah. This, this is so, um, Alright, so explain now a bit more deeper now into like, so okay, so you've got your businesses running now, this is, yeah. you work from home? Yeah, I work from home. Home office? Yeah. All of that stuff, okay, yeah. so and that is that where you make your products and everything as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I have like an, an office in my house and um, it's like my little dispensary, so I have like all my herbs. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. you've yeah. seen it, yeah. <laughs> so, um, That's what I think your doctor needs to be on the other Yeah, 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 but yeah, so I have all my herbs. I work from there. I make my products there. Um, I, say, I, say, I say the doctor thing because I think like everything that you've named, everything that you've studied, I mean, what is the difference in a sense? Yeah, I think they do, they do, I think, do a lot more. Do a lot more. Like, yeah. they, they, they don't just end with that and then that's it, they can become doctors. They have to do way more years of training, I think. Okay, I and yeah, it's just, being a herbalist is, yeah, it's just different, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah We're not allowed to, yeah. yeah. We're not yeah. doctors. Yeah. It is what it is. But you're still, you know, you're helping people, you're saving people, you're, you're educating people, so you know, yeah. you can't go wrong with that. Yeah. So, um, alright, cool, so you've got your dispensary at home, yeah. um, your office, um, you do one-to-ones now, so you're saying you do one-to-ones, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's consultation. Consultation, so that's basically people come in, um, the first consultation will be like an hour and a half, and they basically go over everything. Like they'll they'll talk about their main concerns, why they're coming to me. Um, but then we'll go into like their whole medical history. We'll go and talk about all the different systems of the body. So I'll, I'll ask them about like questions that's relating to like their heart health, mm-hmm. uh, sleep, memory, um, lungs. You know, do you get colds often? All of these different questions. It's yeah. really really in depth. Yeah. Um, we go over like family history, past medical history. Um, like your drug history, so like any medications that you're on, we go over your diet, um, and then by the end of it, I kind of, you know, I have a lot of information, I can kind of put things together, start looking at the case, um, and I come up with herbal prescriptions, and then like, I'll see them on a monthly basis, Okay. Um, and then the follow-ups are like 45 minutes, um, and then, yeah, you just just to track the progress, see what's working, see what's not. So during this time you would have prescribed them or something? Yeah. Okay, okay. So with herbal medicine, it's a lot, you have to be a bit more patient. Some things, it depends on the condition, it depends on what you're, you're coming to see me for. Some things can be resolved quickly. If you have a cold, for example, yeah, yeah. you know, I can give you something within a week, two weeks, you're back to normal, whatever. Yeah. Um, but if you're coming to me with like long-term problems, really deep problems it's not going to be resolved after one mm-hmm. prescription yeah, so i will yeah. prescribe for a month 
you take it, you know, and that would be in like the form of like teas or a tincture, which is like a liquid extract of herbs. Okay. Um, or creams, it depends what it's like it's for. Yeah. Um, and then usually within a couple months they start seeing like a, a change, yeah. um, an improvement. And some yeah, some patients they they after a few months they're like, Thank you so much, you know, oh my gosh, I've actually like, you know, whether it's like gut problems, mm. like it's resolved or whatever, um, and then they don't need to come back. Some people it takes a bit longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. So have you had any like rare cases? Rare <laughs> cases. In a sense of like it was like a you know, serious case I would say. That you actually felt like oh okay. Um in my practice I've had kind of like a a varied like cases, like some varied cases. Mm. I wouldn't say they're like rare. Mm. Um but as as um like when I was training at uni, we would see a lot of interesting cases, like really, really interesting cases. Um, and I can't even think off the top of my head, but some things that are like unexplainable, it's like, what is going on, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe it's stuff to do with like parasites or... Um, what, in the body? Yeah, okay, okay. yeah, like there was like symptoms that happened and it was really interesting. And, and um, we also did training at... Whips Cross Hospitals, so there was a department um, where it was specifically psychodermatology, which is basically people that have had like skin conditions, mm. but they haven't been explained and it seems to be linked with like psychological, like psychological, psychological effects. Um, like a trauma. Some, yeah, it was, it was very varied, you know, mm. it's like there's some sort of link between like the psychology and like skin conditions so that was really interesting because they were really complex cases yeah um i mean so yeah. what do you do, do you find that uh, your clients do they go first somewhere and then come to you or um with my clients it's a mix so there are some that are like they kind of they're interested in this stuff so mm. they're like i'm, I'm really interested yeah, 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 i want to yeah. try it out yeah, yeah, you know yeah, okay. um, and then they'll tell me about like their issues um, others, others have like yeah, they've had long term issues, um, and they haven't got any answers. They haven't so. got answers, okay, okay, so okay. they're trying to like find an answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I've heard that still. So how like, so how's it going right now? How long? Wait, when did you start as well actually? So I graduated in twenty twenty. It was like mid pandemic. That's when I finished my degree. Okay. Um, so yeah, we've been trying to get this interview since so probably then. Actually. Yeah. yeah. It was, <laughs> it was yeah. There, yeah. <laughs> Um, so I started practice. So I started my business with like my products whilst I was at uni. Yeah, yeah. So I did that in. Tw I started in twenty eighteen. Okay. Um, and I was in. So I did four years. My first year was foundation, and then it's first year. Okay. So in the first year, that's when I started to kind of look into starting my business because I was really interested in like I was making things, mm. and I wanted to start selling it to family and friends. But yeah. I decided I wanted to go down the proper route. Like let me do this professionally. Um, and I was like, I, I seeked out advice, um, and yeah, I did the things the proper way. So I ended up launching my company, um, and that was very limited because. You're not a herbalist, so you can't be talking about herbs and what they're good for. You know, you have to be very. I can't say any information about herbs, you know, because I'm not qualified. Yeah. So I was doing like lip balms and bath balms yeah, and stuff like that. Seen on the page. Right? Yeah, yeah. So that's that's kind of. I'm kind of going through a shift where I'm, I'm working on new products now. Um, but yeah, I started that. But then once I qualified in 2020, um, I started my practice basically beginning of 2021. So I've been doing it nearly two years now. Okay. So yeah. how how would you how would you say that you're you're doing? I mean, I know you're doing, but yeah. how would you? You know, everyone is a critique of their own self. Yeah, so obviously, yeah. how like you know, how are you feeling right now about where you are at? Right now? I'm, how everything's going? Yeah, I'm really happy with where I'm at right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it goes up and down. You know, I have my moments where I'm like, oh, is this gonna work? Is, mm. You know, it's, it's, it's very overwhelming when you're also the only person running your business. And especially when I have different areas of my business, you have yeah. to kind of juggle everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm very grateful. Like I have got a, you know, kind of a good client base. Mm. Um, I've had a lot of success stories from some clients as well where, you know, they've given me such good feedback and they said, you know, 
yeah, really good feedback and I've helped them for why they've come to me. So that's really nice to see, yeah, you know, yeah. that, oh wow, I'm actually doing this all by myself. I'm yeah, getting yeah. no help, no yeah, guidance yeah, yeah, yeah. from a supervisor or whatever. Yeah, 100%. And I'm actually really helping people. Yeah, so that, yeah. that definitely getting getting that feedback from people, like, what does that do for you? Like, you um, it's Especially like your success nice. stories. Yeah, no, it's nice yeah. because <laughs> it is, yeah, because the reason, the reason I nice. say that is because that we, a lot of us, when we're running our business, we don't even count little wins yeah. or anything. We always just think, oh, well, you know, yeah. they're going to say that or something like that. But it's good, it's important to just count little wins yeah. because what it does for the body, you know, it, the thing is, it pushes with, you. With, with, um, with patients, like my clients, with them it's different because they're paying for a service. So yeah. I don't think they wouldn't lie, you know, yeah, yeah, in, no, I hear that. in the sense that like, if they're gonna save and there, there are some you know patients that have where it's like things aren't working or you know it, things aren't resolving and we have to kind of look further into it and we need to kind of go through different avenues and stuff mm-hmm. um but when you're seeing that there's you know you're having your follow-ups and then each follow-up you're seeing an improvement and you're seeing like they're giving you good feedback where they're like oh actually this month yeah actually i haven't had any um issues and i've realized that i did take the medicine and it really helped oh, after yeah, I was having yeah. a little moment and then I took it and then actually it really helped my symptoms mm-hmm. so that's really really like yeah comforting to see yeah it was it was actually like um intriguing for me as well like going on your page and actually seeing that because when someone says oh yeah like you know you extract things from plants and you make these things yeah I mean obviously to actually see it done it's a bit like oh bro like is that exactly how it's done so that's actually quite sick as well like to yeah. you know I was quite intrigued like watching that and seeing the process but was that um, basically you learned that from your course? Um, a mix of things. So um, on the course, you do learn how to kind of make some medicines. Yes, um, with like product side of it. Mm. To be honest, a lot of it is some of it is self-taught. So there is things like herbal infusions. You know how to infuse oils. You learn that as part of your course because it's about how medicines are extracted. Because you know, um, as well, you need to. If you want like a particular effect from a plant, you need to know how to extract it to mm-hmm. get the right chemicals from it. I know that sounds a bit complex, but you know, having a herbal tea with certain plants, like roots for example, just in pouring tea over a root, you're not really going to extract the things that you need. You need to do a different method, so you need to boil it. Mm-hmm. Or there's certain plants that you need um, like a fatty or alcoholic um substance to extract certain chemicals so we learn about stuff like that you know like when do you need uh, to have like a water extract when do you need to have like a a fat extract um kind of thing to extract it but in terms of like my products a lot of it is self-taught like self-taught or i've gone on and learned no, further so, yeah, yeah, afterwards yeah. yeah see that's sick because obviously <laughs> I didn't know, but I feel like I understand more because I wouldn't actually be that person that <clears throat> you would think, oh, this is a root or this is a plant. Let me just go pour some hot water in yeah, there and yeah. just like, make a tea. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or even when people would say, like, with, like, say, cannabis, people mm-hmm. would make cannabis teas, but then obviously they would just think, oh, just put cannabis in it and just, yeah, yeah, <laughs> just yeah. boil it. Do you understand? And I guess, I don't know, I guess you're not extracting it. Like, yeah, I mean, it's there different ways to It depends, it. like, yeah, it depends on the type of material. Like, yeah, leaves, flowers, yeah. even seeds and stuff. They are good, you know, you can, um, you know, make a tea. Mm-hmm. But then something like that as well is you don't, like, put the tea bag and then pour the water and then drink it straight away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 you need yeah. to make it, you yeah. need to infuse it. Yeah, you need yeah, that yeah. for, like, 20 minutes. Cover it, because if you're not covering it, all those essential yeah, oils are going to go, and that's where the medicine is as well. So you're not getting the, the medicine that you need. So, yeah. Free game, guys. See, free game. See, don't, listen. <laughs> Don't ever say we don't bring you the best guests, yeah? <laughs> and the best knowledge. Serious, because what this is all about, like, even just life in general, like, obviously, is about, like, you know, we, we have to unlearn a lot of things and then relearn them, you get? And then even the journey that you're on and what you are doing with your business, that is literally that, do you understand? Yeah. Because a lot of people now are going, you know, plant-based now, yes. they're going down these routes now, do you understand? Yeah. Like, um, medical herb, all, all of that, everyone's going mm-hmm. down these yeah. roots now. So they it's want getting... natural products for their skin exactly. and stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah. They're more conscious about what they're putting into their bodies. Mm-hmm. You know, they're more aware of like synthetic products and stuff. Yeah. And this is another thing that I wanted to point out as well, like even just touching on about knowing how to, you know, how to work with herbs. Mm-hmm. I think this is why it's important as well, like the products that I make, um, putting them out on the shelves, 
you know, it's like, oh, why, why should you buy from me? Well, I'm trained and mm-hmm. I'm qualified mm-hmm. in this. Like, I know what I'm doing. I haven't done a quick Google search yeah, 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 and yeah. just thought up of like, you know, a couple ingredients to make this oil or this product. No, 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 no. Like, I'm very conscious about what the herbs that I'm choosing for the product, for the purpose that it needs, mm-hmm. you know, um, and I know how to do it in a safe way as well. Um, so, yeah. That's good still. So, yeah, that definitely will, you know, gain people's trust and confidence in exactly. you well and your yeah. products. Yeah. That's good. So, how do you, um, you know, balance, like, you know, work life and then obviously family life, etc.? Um, I'm still figuring it out. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like, especially because I work from home, um, I, just, I work all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't have set days. Like, I feel like if I have spare time, if I have free time, then I should be working. You know, so it's something that I'm, I'm definitely. Have, I have to work on in terms of balancing it out good well um, but also as well because I'm still at the beginning stages um, mm-hmm. you know it's very unpredictable like my schedule is always changing and as well especially to do with like seasons um, like you know especially like for example this season coming up like I'm going to be focusing more on my products you know mm-hmm. going to markets so I need to be restocking and stuff like that Whereas, you know, other times of the month, maybe I'm focusing on my clients or other times okay, I'm yeah, focusing yeah. on my workshops yeah, and preparing yeah, for yeah. that. So that's literally it really, how the business is being. <laughs> yeah, it really like yeah. fluctuates. And, um, but that's good that you kind of like separated like that because, you know, obviously you, it looks like, yeah, this is just one business, but there's different sectors yeah, to yeah. things. So you actually have to like give that time to one then give time to that yeah. and that time to that. So that is good that you're doing that as well. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, in terms of yeah, personal life, I feel like I mean I'm kind of, I'm managing it well. But yeah. when you work from home, sometimes you know when you're supposed to be working, actually oh let me start cooking, mm. or oh actually I need to do this or that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really hard to kind of have set schedules. Yeah. I kind of just go with the flow and you know that's work good, out that's my that's schedule week to week. Yeah, 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 that's good. Yeah. 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 yeah, it is sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, I hear that. Um, yeah. So, who are some of your inspirations in your life, like growing up, or just inspirations that you know motivate you, they inspire you, or they push you? Like, yeah. Um. In terms of. This like, could be like family, friends, or this could be just, you know, anyone. Yeah, anyone. yeah. So I think first and foremost, my mom, um, because I feel like she, I take a lot. I take up. How do you say? It? I take after her a lot, mm-hmm. um, in terms of like her temperament and her character you know okay. she's a very strong italian woman yeah <laughs> um, and yes yeah, so I've, I've learned so much from her um and she's really inspirational in terms of like where she's come from so she's from like a small village like mountain village in the south of italy um and she came here as an adult um, and she didn't know english and she's really you know done everything from scratch and she's worked from day one and you know, she's where she's at now in terms of um, just, she's just really, I don't know, she's just really. Strong. Yeah, she's, strong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. she's really yeah. inspirational. Like, she's yeah, very, yeah. very hard working. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, definitely her. And I think also, as an adult now, like looking at my family in terms of like what my family does. Mm-hmm. So, uh, my Italian side, they're all farmers. So, okay. they like, they work in agriculture. So they grow their own um, olives and grapes and all of that, tomatoes. So they like make oil, o- olive oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they make their own wines. They make their own like tomato sauces and stuff. Everything is like from okay. the earth. And it's crazy how like as an adult, like I'm kind of like more and more going back to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, on my Irish side, we have a history of like um, business. Mm. So um, my great great granddad like owned a brewery and he actually they used to. Um, bottle um, Guinness, okay. so they like Guinness would send their beer to their brewery, and like our family name would like be on the bottles okay. and stuff. And they used to make other things as well. So it's crazy, like me now, like I'm an entrepreneur. Yeah, so yeah. I have my like, Irish and entrepreneurial yeah. side, yeah. and then I have like the natural herbal yeah, yeah. going back proper. to the ground, you know. Proper, proper. Side, so. See, so that's what I'm saying. This is why things are important because that obviously just got that, you know. Um, brought down to you in a yeah. sense and then obviously clearly you're going to bring it down to but us. weirdly indirectly yeah, yeah. like it was never like a thing like that unconsciously I'm, happened yeah so. it's just weird how like my journey has led me to this and it's like wow it's so much there's so much to relate to like mm-hmm. my family yeah yeah yeah, I yeah. That. because 
because that's actually been like, refreshing to even hear like that um, side of it because more time the story that you normally hear is that you know okay we're the ones that we kind of have to just go make this happen and break this generational curse where not to say that our family weren't on squat or whatever not it's not nothing to do with that however it's just different like aspects of things where they look at things differently or depending on background you know what i'm saying there's a lot of that background that they'll look at anything that you're doing and be like if you're not working you're not doing this you're not I doing mean, that do you know what i, was I say? still have to go through that struggle yeah. because i mean now as an adult i'm reflecting and i'm seeing the links between like you know my families and stuff like i mean first of all my irish side like that that business side has kind of died out it died out like um I think out like my granddad's level, so okay. it's not we're not connected <laughs> to it anymore. Yeah, I still in the blood. Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then like, and also like my other side, uh, you know, they, you know, they str- they struggle. It's like mm. farmer's life yeah. is not an easy life. Yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, so there's that. Um, but like my parents, for example, you know, they're completely not involved with any of that kind yeah, of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, definitely. Even when I was going through down this route, like I would, I was getting told, you know. If you're, is it going to give you a job though? Like, mm, you know, that kind, that kind of thing. Yeah. So now I'm <laughs> <Sounds> actually, <bigger. laughs> yes, yeah. and my family, you know, it has been a struggle um, with just, yeah, just, just struggle, you know, financially growing up and stuff. So this is where I'm like, I want to have my own business. Mm. I want to be, you know, looking after my family and even for my children as well, yeah. where I can take care of them and my parents as well, take mm. care of them. Um, and. Because, yeah, it is a hard life, like, even for my parents, like, they're still working, like, full-time, constantly, mm-hmm. and it's a struggle, so, yeah. A hundred. hundred, yeah. hundred. All right, before, I think we're going to get into the game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're going to get into the game. You should have done your research. So, we're going to lie to you, but, you know, it's good that, you know, you're going to just experience it. So, basically, the game is, um, you know, you will pick some questions but okay. I'll read them out to you and yeah. you answer like you know as honestly as possible meaning openly like, okay, to- cool. totally honest. Okay, cool, cool, cool. You understand that obviously there's nothing in here that's gonna incriminate or anything we don't okay, need on the show. Cool. Yeah. But I and also I don't know who wrote these questions. Oh, so, okay, yeah, cool. yeah, this is interesting. Yeah, very interesting. You should have done your research, but it's all good. But you know what actually that like, I always say when it comes to the game show questions it's like Whatever your hand picks, you get. So yeah, yeah, no one knows yeah. whatever yeah. your destiny is right now. So yeah, so right. yeah. So don't open it up, yeah. No, I, I will. Yeah, you just pick one and then I'll read it. Okay, read it. Well, let's see. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well. Um, <clears throat> so what would you do if a friend of the same sex confessed feelings for you? Oh. Is that what you say? <laughs> no, I'd be like, oh. I mean, um, I'm sorry, but I'm not interested and I'm happily married to my husband. So yeah, thank you. Great answer. <laughs> cool. Next one. Put that question in there. There's crazy questions in here, so but hope you don't get any but you know. Interested in a different off topic. This is a very yeah, bad yeah, yeah. a lot everyone does love the game because it's just they're random. Yeah. It's very random. This is very random. <laughs> so, um, what's your guilty pleasure in the bedroom? Let's go. Yo, people. Peace and prosperity. This is your most valuable voices team. And this episode is sponsored by Tax Free. Yes, you know we have to do it for the culture. So That's why we're bringing you an exclusive discount 15% called MVV. Mm-hmm. Found in the link in the description below. Go there, copy yours. Be ready. Yes, that is MVV15. When you go on the website to copy your drip, type that in 15%. Yeah, let's get it. Um, I mean, this is all business related. This is all business related, and I'm very private, so I'm gonna talk about. Late night eating snacks in bed. That's what I'm going to do. But this, no, I respect that answer because people actually look at that and actually just automatically go to the dark side. Yeah, you yeah, understand? Yeah. That is a guilty pleasure. Yeah. You eat snacks in bed. That, that, yeah. That's it. This is how you're supposed to answer, guys. It's not, everything is not like what it seems. You answer yeah. literally how you answer. You get it. So yeah. I love that answer. <laughs> cool. Okay, yeah, do another one. Oh, that's, that's a two. Yeah, that's all right. We'll, okay. we'll, yeah, we'll ask. Yeah, that's <laughs> another one. Alright. 
this is a bit mad. Oh, these are intense. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, if you found out your husband was born the opposite sex at birth, what would you do? Oh, wow. Um, I don't know. Do you remember you're married and letting know? I don't know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I feel like that would be a lot to process. I think I need to go to therapy and then I have to figure it out though because I don't even know. Like, yeah, that would be at the same time, you know, you have a, a you have a, a relationship and you have like a strong relationship, but at the same time, that's a bit of a no, no, no. You should have told me that on day one. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the, the thing. For me, that's the deceit. Very, yeah, yeah. Just, that's the seat. That's like, straight up and down. Like, exactly. You know, like now I'm fully in there. <laughs> exactly. No, 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 no. This yeah. should have been day one topic. Yeah, yeah. Hundred you know? percent. So, yeah. Okay, cool. I'm gonna ask Avani. I didn't do one more because usually when my co-hosts are here, we all ask two each. Okay, so, cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay, we're gonna ask another one because you did say that you're very proud, so cool. Okay. Oh, I appreciate oh, you know what? You know what? He's an arsehole. Yeah, cool. Don't Wait, what? He's an arsehole. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. Okay, ah, nah. Let's, let's hear. If it's, no, if you feel, if you're conscious. I don't know, though. At the end of the day, yeah. I, I yeah, anyway, no problem, no problem. Because really, no one escapes these questions, really, on this show. So there you go. Ah, yes. <laughs> Okay, if you could write a book, what genre would you write in? Ooh. Mystery, thriller, romance, crime, fiction, non-fiction. Funny enough, when I was a kid, I liked writing. And I think that's maybe another thing that I wanted to do. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I want to be an author and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, I mean, you know, I think that's something you should take up definitely on, you know, with yeah. what your business is, you know, to do with as well, 100%. Yeah, but... Um, I would say like some sort of mystery crime mm -hmm. thing or something. I don't know, something like that maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's definitely like my type of um I like I like them type of movies. Yeah, <laughs> like I love that. Oh my and all that stuff. Yeah. Okay, last one and then we'll move on from the game. Yeah, last one. Oh. These oh. questions make me nervous. I mean, they make all guests <laughs> nervous. <laughs> You lost your phone and somebody found it. What would you be most fearful about them finding? Um, I think the reason why I'm deep in it because I'm like, actually, I don't think I actually keep it on my phone. But I would, I would, feel, I would say like business related stuff. Mm -hmm. Business yeah, related yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's the game. <laughs> that's the game for you. You passed the flying colours. <laughs> yeah, I know, like, I had all two stars. <laughs> yeah, like, it gets, I'm not gonna lie, that game gets nuts. But yeah. uh, it's, it's definitely gonna be, you know, it breaks the ice a bit as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we're gonna go back into, you know, what are some of your ways, so, some some of the ways that you like promote your business and get it out there? Yeah. Um, I think the main thing is um, social media, so especially Instagram, um, you know, I post my progress on there, I post what I'm doing, anything that I'm, is coming up, um, yeah. I do that. Um, also, when I'm like providing one of the services, so like if I'm at a market selling my products, then that gives me a good opportunity to talk about my business and also kind of talk about my practice, about mm -hmm. like what I do actually aside from the products mm -hmm. or the fact that I teach. Um, same thing with workshops, like it gives me an opportunity to talk about, um, you know, my practice again yeah, or yeah. the fact that I have products as well that you can buy, so kind of cross-selling. Okay, yeah. 100%, 100%. And I think stuff like this as well, yeah, yeah, yeah. networking and talking, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 100% well, yeah, when this gets aired, I'm telling you, you know, definitely you're going to be pushing it anyway. Um, so yeah, that will might have to touch on now to get into the workshops now. Yeah. Yeah, so talk to us about the workshops. Yes. So, yeah, so um, I'll talk about what um, I did over the summer. Mm -hmm. So over the summer, um, I attended um, a festival, like an adults um, summer camp festival, which Is was... Is that the last thing you kind of posted on your... Yeah, 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 so yeah I saw called, that. That yeah. was really interesting. So it was called Camp Wildfire, and it's basically like a massive festival for adults where you camp for the weekend, like they camp for the weekend um, and during the day they do like all these activities, they mm -hmm. do like adventure stuff okay. um, and then they, they basically like book onto different activities and then at night time I think it's like parties, stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. 
So um, yeah, like I was approached to do that, um, and it was two weekends, so it was four days in total, um, and I ended up teaching a total of four hundred people. Wow. Um, and we did a, we did an apothecary workshop. So that's basically yeah, apothecary is um, the traditional pharmacy kind of thing. So someone who makes and sells medicines. Okay. So um, we basically did a workshop all about um, herbal medicine, medicinal herbs for the skin. Um, and we made three different uh, medicines as well, so that was a real like success. Mm -hmm. um, it was so popular. Like we had people begging to like, you know, can can we sit in? Can we join yeah. in? And we had to kind of turn people away because it was so busy, and you know, we only prepared for a certain amount, and you know, you couldn't have yeah, too many yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Congrats on that, by the way. That's that's, that's thank big. you. Yeah. So there was that. Um, I've and that was for adults. Mm. Um, but I've actually recently started a junior herbalist club. And I see that. So, I really like that. <laughs> yeah, so this is basically um, a club for children, teaching them all about like the medicinal healing properties of plants. Mm -hmm. um, and each month we focus on um, a specific plant. So September was um, lavender. Okay. Um, so we learn all about lavender. We learn about like the traditional uses of lavender, like little interesting stories about um, you know historical people that have used lavender or like how it was used in the past. Mm -hmm. We learn how to safely um, identify yeah. plants and how to um, like forage them, so pick them. Okay. Um, okay. And also uh, we learn how to make herbal medicine. So we make like a few different herbal preparations in the class. Um, and I find this, this really important because I feel like it's so important to get to, you know, children and start introducing it to them because, you know, they, they start to learn about how to use basic herbs for this uh, for like first aid or mm -hmm. minor ailments you know oh i've been stung by a bee oh well, i know that there's that plant in mm -hmm. the park i can rub that on and it's going to help with like the, the yeah, pain yeah, or something yeah, yeah. Yeah. so yeah i do that as well and i and i do some like one-off workshops um for different people and i, I want to do a lot more as well in the future yeah. <clears throat> i think the workshops are like, definitely like important to that like, because everything that you're saying now is interesting because i'll you know <clears throat> Who would really think that? Oh no, I got stung. <laughs> but there's something in this exactly. in this park right here. I could just go and you know yeah, what. Yeah, yeah. But even just to know that is key because you think, oh yeah, when am I really gonna wanna know that until it actually happens yeah. in the ground? You know what I'm saying? Because nobody knows. You never know exactly. when you're gonna need something. And even just the fact that like even like seasonal like. You know, let's say, okay, in the winter, so I did a workshop on winter remedy making last year, mm. and it was all about, you know, how to look after yourself during the winter, so making a fire cider vinegar, and that would help to, like, you know, prevent from colds and treat colds, mm -hmm. um, immune boosting teas, um, and a chest rub, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but also, like, teaching people that, you know, in the parks, there's certain plants that, for specific seasons, so you can go and pick things yourself and then make it at home, yeah. you know, for winter or even in spring for hay fever, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, like, there's yeah. so many things out there. And this is on your, like, you, you, you basically promote this all on your page as well, like certain of these aspects as well, yeah, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. so make sure yeah. you check out the page as well, yeah. Naturally Untamed Limited. Yes. So you can go see for yourself, 100%. Yeah. That's interesting. Then workshops are really, really good. Um, so how many do you have? So you have two? Um, no, so my, my current set workshop at the moment, which is my junior herbalist club, yeah, that's yeah. just that's just one. So we meet once a month and it's throughout the whole year. That's um, but like, so yeah. how, is, how is that with, um, you know, how, like, you know, uh, like how many children do you kind of, or juniors do you have? Yeah, like, so, um, so this is my first year of actually doing the junior herbalist club. I've got six students um, this year. Um, and yes, yeah, so it's really, really nice. I think it's a good number. Um, it's not too little, but it's not too many. Mm -hmm. um, and it allows me to like really focus on the students. Yeah. Um, and but yeah, to grow as well. yeah, yeah. But I, I hope to you know grow it even further. And like <clears throat> like next year, I hope to you know double or triple the intake. Um, mm -hmm. And also, I want to introduce. Um, just start doing more workshops as well, like even for like events, like if people want to hire me for like a party or something, mm -hmm. you know, I can do a workshop for you. 100%. If you want to, a bunch of your friends, you want to do something, you know, I don't know, for whatever event, like, yeah, hire me, I'll do like a bespoke workshop for yeah. you, stuff like that. So, yeah. I'm keeping that in mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%, because even like, obviously, like, I'm looking to get into events anyway, but, you know, again, like I'm very like outside the box and, and creative when it comes to a lot of things. I don't like doing things that everyone does. Do you get? So I would have 
like my events will be like you know there's art stuff there there's fashion stuff there there's music um, vibes going on here there might be an interview thing here then yeah, there might yeah. be someone that's coming to speak like you coming to speak on um herbs yeah, yeah like herbal medicine and all that stuff do you understand like a or even have like a panel mm. something can you we'll work that 100 yeah. <laughs> percent. And, and i've learned as well like especially over the summer when i did that workshop um yeah. the, the the festival because I, I saw so many people um, and they're really like ordinary people, a mix of men and women. Like, you know, there are some people that are really into this stuff mm-hmm. and they do this, that it's part of their life. And other people, it's new to them. They don't really know what to expect, but they were interested. And then by the end of it, they're like, no, I want to so learn more into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some people then want to go down into one-on-one support. Some people want to go and study it further. Mm-hmm. So I think it's really accessible for everyone, for children, Definitely. adults, Definitely. men, women. It's not mm-hmm. like a, you don't have to be a particular type of yeah, person yeah. to be into it. Hundred yeah. percent. So how was um? So how was the 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 kids um on the in, in the workshop? Like how was it? You know, keeping them like their focus and all of that stuff and their attention was it? Yeah. Was I mean, it? um, it's tailored it's really basic for the yeah, kids yeah. so it's it's tailored to for them um and obviously i think i kind of work well with kids anyway mm-hmm. you know you keep it very simple you don't like to spend too long focusing on one thing mm-hmm. and especially when they start making things like yeah, they yeah. love that stuff yeah yeah so um that's like the fun aspect yeah the like keeping yeah, them yeah. active and like um so we basically we made um, like little lavender bags to help with like sleep so they put it under their pillow and it's going to help them with sleep we okay. also made lavender sugar so like it was like strumpy sugar so like learning how to like just yeah. basic little yeah. things it's kind of like arts and crafts yeah, yeah, at the same time yeah, yeah. and then we made like um lavender lemonade so like they were all part of the process with like cutting the lemons and making the juice and okay. making the lavender tea and all of that stuff um, so, so what's the ages yeah. as well, the, uh, the age that you can bring? So in? this was, I was prom- promoting it for like ages 7 to 12, um, but I have quite a few children that are younger than 7. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say, I think from like 5 on upwards, mm-hmm. um, they I would, really respond well to it. Yeah, I would say keep me posted because you know, I've got my little brother, my little nephews, and yeah. that's something I would just want to push them into. 100%, no, uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because yeah. It's, again, it's different, you know, that's yeah. that's different and it's knowledge at the same time. It's yeah. fun knowledge and it's different, do you understand? No, exactly. So I would definitely, you know, I mean, the kids are the future, so we definitely need to be pushing them more over to that instead of, definitely. you know, on that screen of the iPad. Do exactly. <laughs> you understand? Exactly. Seriously, yeah. because, you know, that's the taking them. But, yeah. And children, I think, they really enjoy it. Like, yeah, they yeah. do. They're, I mean, I have a mix of, like, boys and girls, mm-hmm. and they just really, they, they're really into it because, you know, it's like, outside you know you go exploring outside you're making stuff you're tasting things whilst you're learning so it's really interactive is it is it a free workshop paid workshop no no no. they pay for the year so it's okay. a year it's a year-long curriculum okay um and they pay for the year um and how much is it for the year it's 180 pounds okay so um and then you only meet once a month and it's about an hour it's an hour and a half the, the session so mm-hmm. it's 18 pounds a session okay um but that includes like all the tu- uh the tuition and all the materials you know you get like folders you're making different medicines every every month mm-hmm. um and then you get like a little graduation ceremony at the end that's, of the certificate yeah, yeah, you can call yeah. yourself i'm a junior herbalist yeah yeah, yeah. Um, that's, that's powerful. and it's basically it's a two-year curriculum so i can invite them it's not a must you don't have to come back for year two but there's also a curriculum for year two and you kind of go more in depth with again more plants but mm-hmm. then it's a bit more complex um medicines that you're making so like syrups and lotions and mm-hmm. things that are a yeah, bit more yeah. complex so yeah so so is that just a one-off uh, one year payment or can you pay monthly or? um it's it is um to pay up front oh, but okay. um is very flexible in terms of you know if you are struggling then um you know we can set up like a payment plan mm-hmm. or something like that yeah no, um, i just ask because it's always good to just know no no, no. and that's just for everyone yeah, else yeah. as well because okay. um yeah like uh, there are you know some cases where um instead of like maybe paying it all up front then maybe over like three months or something like that mm-hmm. or four months mm-hmm. um but yeah i'll hear that stuff so yeah that's good because yeah, that like I said, I'm definitely interested in that, you know, to get the the little ones in there because you know a lot. Yeah. Of, well, obviously, we used to do it when we were young as well, but I find a lot of, like the, the kid, the kids now they were just on board. Everything's on board, yeah. on board, like on board, on board. Yeah, and that's yeah. it. Just bored, 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 and they want to just do one thing. But 
where our generation raised up, we're just outside. Yeah. <laughs> we're outside making our own fun. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We weren't really stuck on these things like that. You get it? So yeah, yeah, man. Sometimes, well, not sometimes. I, I definitely, you know, because I've been raised like that, I always just want to, you know, just give them a balance at least. Do you understand? Yeah. Obviously, they have to live their life and that, but still, you have to have that balance. Of like, yeah, man, just this is how we used to have fun like this. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Doing other things. Yeah, yeah. And even, even. Even in like, um, even that, uh, uh, you know, big age, that like, even doing different things, like oh, partying with that, like, that, that's normal. Everyone yeah, does yeah, that. Yeah. Going to do different things, like, do you know? Exactly. Like, this is things yeah. I've been on. Like, like, I'd go and do different things, go to art yeah. galleries, exactly. museums, all of these all little poetry. Like, that's the thing. Like, yeah. You get me? Because a lot of us, what I found out is that we used to do so much fun stuff when we were like, yeah. you know, school, um, college and all of that stuff and then we just, it's like, we get too cool for that shit. Exactly. Like, 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 but then really, realistically, like, we love that, them stuff, so then now, like, even things like Batman, Pink, no. like, now yeah. I start doing all of these things, like, I think, you like, know, I miss, I miss sports, <laughs> like, when I was in school, I was in, like, all the sports teams at school, you know, um, you're probably the only one girl because in, in every school no, there's yeah. only like one or no, two girls. No, we have a girls team. Like, okay, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, so we're like doing basketball, netball, all of that stuff. And like, I love, like, I'm, I'm a very competitive person. Yeah, yeah. So, so, um, yeah, <laughs> so, and it's, now I think about it a lot, like as an adult, like you kind of, you're not involved with that anymore. And obviously there are places that you can get into and I would love to like get into yeah, that yeah. stuff. But like, yeah, doing after school clubs and, you know, first of all, you're meeting so many different people. Exactly. And second of all, like you're so active and it's really like opening your mind exactly. to things. Yeah, when you're adults, you kind of stop doing that. Exactly. Well, but yeah, this yeah. is what is important. And yeah, because yeah. the whole unlearn, relearn thing I'm talking about, I'm, you know, I'm unlearning that whole, yeah, what do you mean that's too cool to yeah. stop doing that and then just, you know, relearning it back. Like, yeah, this is things that I like to do because at the end of the day, it's not just, it's, it's about, you know, things that you do and it makes you inside feel good, you know, yeah. this is the endorphins and exactly. these things and it makes, that feel good stuff, do you understand? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're basically like trying to like rid ourselves of feel goodness yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then replacing it with things that, you know, they feel good in the moment but the calm down's crazy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. do you feel me? So, yeah. you know, and then that's where you come in, yeah. you know, my gut is hurting, <laughs> do you understand yeah, that? Exactly. Do you get it? Like, yeah. It's crazy still. Um, right, so I always ask this with anybody um, yeah. that has a business um, and then my co-host are always like oh yeah that's a, such a broad question to ask so I ask it anyway yeah. it is what it is but I'm like yeah so what is your end goal? My end goal? Um, I don't think there's a, like an end goal mm -hmm. because I feel like I'm going to constantly evolve because you know naturally untamed mm -hmm. you know Come on. we're going to keep <laughs> on growing forever 100%. Um, but what I would really love is to have like my own physical place, mm -hmm. so like a, an apothecary, like naturally untamed apothecary, a place where you can go and buy my products um, in store, um, it's where I practice from, maybe I'll hire other practitioners mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then they work from there, it's a space, like a community space where people can um, come for workshops, so it's like I have a set space. Mm -hmm. um, but like just going into with like my mission and my goal is just really reconnecting people like children and adults with the knowledge of herbal medicine in this like modern day environment um it's really important so i really want to like grow with that so that's like my end goal and then from there then i'll, yeah, I'll but expand everyone does that same thing you're like oh end goal then they say it that but obviously i understand what you mean like the end goal can definitely change you can get to your goal but then obviously then have another and then goal and then have another yeah. goal but it's always just nice to just know but what ideally, people. Yeah, yeah, ideally, I just want a space. Like, I want to have like a store or something mm -hmm. where um, people can come to. Because um, you know, I can't work from home forever. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, yeah, I want to get to that point. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. So yeah. Okay, so what apart from work? What is you know what are some things that you're interested in? What do you get up to? Like, what do you like to do for fun or what you know to to relax? Like, what do you what do you um, get into? Um, I think like, I would like, oh. okay, so I love, I love food, um, I love cooking, yeah. um, and I love learning about different cultures, um, I'm really interested in that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, like, I, I mean, I would love to like travel more. Um, but also, I love like travel food documentaries. Okay, so okay. I, that's like my favorite type of shows where yeah, yeah. it's like someone is like a chef or whatever, and then they're like in another country and they're learning about like, you know, different foods the cultures, and cultures yeah, yeah, and stuff. Yeah, 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 and yeah. Like, I love that stuff. So, yeah, like, I do that. Um, I watch stuff like that. 
Um, I'm in a yeah a, a moment where I'm watching a lot of like crime mm -hmm. shows and documentaries where uh, like serial killer documentaries, yeah, yeah, yeah. all of that stuff. I know. True crime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's so crazy when you say it like you're just a serial killer, but it's like so fascinating, dog. It is because that like, you know when you're watching it, you're actually thinking how obviously you're thinking of so many aspects. Like, how did this person yeah, think this yeah, way? Yeah. Why did they do this, etc., etc. You yeah. know what I'm trying to say? We were talking um, about that as well, um, uh, obviously a few episodes back, mm. but um, we were literally talking about like um, people getting um, drawn into characters mm. or people, <laughs> well not characters, we talk about like say films or something, so you get drawn into a character but in re in realistically they're a bad person mm. but then you get drawn yeah, into yeah, them yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. either their characters play very well or you end up um, becoming empathetic of them, yeah, yeah, so you yeah, kind of yeah, understand where they're coming from. Mm. In a sense, you don't support what they're doing, but you you kind of end yeah, up yeah, that's you, interesting. yeah. Like so, you know, we touched on we touched on that, and it was yeah. it is interesting. I thought that's interesting because it came from obviously like my dad one time mm. where we were speaking, and he was talking about how he loved the uh, Heisenberg from uh, from Breaking Bad, mm. but then he was like, but how can I like him because he's you know, what he's doing is so bad, yeah, like for the community and he's killing people, da 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 and all of this stuff. And then that's what that like, actually just thought, that's actually, mm. yeah, like, do you know what I'm saying? Do people really like, you know, taking characters like that? Because I always say it's like, you always hear about mad serial killers and they got a mad fan club. Yeah. Like, exactly. some serial killers, they be like, yeah, they prey on women and they kill women. But no, their, their fan club is mad women. So there's there's um, a really good show at the moment that um, we're watching. It's called Mindhunter. No, Mind I've watched Hunter. that. I, listen, I told everyone. I mean, last episode, I thought, listen, I told everyone no. about Mindhunter. It is amazing. It is. I love it. That's amazing. I haven't finished it, but okay. like, I love, it, like, I, I love like that where they're trying to figure. And it's crazy because we like we know about serial killers and yeah. stuff, but they were figuring out the terms how to like. They, they figured out serial killer, like yes. what is a serial killer. Yes. And, it, and even you talking about, you know, how people can um, kind of empathize mm -hmm. or like people yeah. that are like criminals and mm -hmm. stuff. And you know, it's weird because there were some people that I'm just like, oh, it's simple, you know, like, like it's like, you get mad yeah, 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 a hundred percent. My partner, that was for me, I was like, wow, it made me really empathize with these people. But yeah. I was just like, wow, I can't believe that I'm here. A lot of people need help. Like they yeah. need support, they need help, but it's crazy. Some people are just completely messed up. Yeah. But I think yeah, sometimes you can like look at people and be like, well, they just need like real help and mm -hmm. support because mm -hmm. obviously too, they're not okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. But I love shows like that, like yeah, yeah, stuff yeah. like that, figuring things out, like oh something's happening, heists, yeah, yeah, that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. I hear that. Oh, that's yeah. good still. Okay. Well, we're gonna touch on um, you know, your happily married. Yes. Congrats. Thank you. Yeah, Thank so you. we're just going to touch on that slide. You know, we're going to get all up in your beers. But yeah. Um, yeah, so how long have you been married for and how is that going for you? Um, so I've been married for two years. Um, we got married during the pandemic. Um, so it was a very stressful and complicated period of time. No, oh. so, no, we didn't. So basically, we, um, we had our religious ceremony in 2020 mm -hmm. um, and that was a very like small intimate ceremony and mm -hmm. it was really really nice um, and that was like just in our home and stuff so yeah that was just if it's small so no marks or anything like that so, 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 the club. Well, so when you say religious what? Islamic okay okay yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. so um, yeah actually I was going to say as well in the previous um, question as well about like outside of work and stuff mm -hmm. i would say like my faith as well yeah, like i'm yeah. really so i'm i'm muslim but i was born catholic so yeah i've seen i see something that you're like really reverted yeah yeah, yeah 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 but i mean a lot of us like i was raised christian and catholic but then now i'm like just just spiritual yeah mm -hmm. yeah to be honest you get like because you know I'm, yeah i mean religion i mean everyone has their thing with religion but yeah. you know for me a lot of it's this like too much control, just personally, just for me. Yeah. Like I'm kind of rebellious at heart, so yeah, you yeah. know, if if something you know sounds right to me, that's cool. And if yeah. it don't, or it's just some grey area that I'm like, yeah, you get. yeah. So for me, like I, I, I love like religion. Mm -hmm. I love you know my faith and stuff, and my whole journey. Like it's been such a long journey, like mm -hmm. since um, a child. Yeah. yeah. Um and. 
yeah like i i was i feel very blessed in the sense that i feel like i was guided like i've been guided throughout the years i've i've kind of not just like been forced by my family to be religious like i i think i just took it upon myself where i did believe in god mm. and i've always believed in god so mm. that like led me on a whole journey yeah um so yeah like in my spare time i do you know um, I'm, I'm very um i find my faith important mm. and i do love like learning about my religion and learning about about the history of my religion, you know, the, the Christianity, Islam, mm -hmm. Judaism, you know, it's all part of the same religion. Um, so, yeah, like yeah. I'm really passionate yeah. about that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so mm -hmm. marriage, so we had uh, yeah, our Islamic um, ceremony. Yeah. Um, so we had that because our, our legal, you know, wedding, big wedding, mm -hmm. Um, that got postponed, cancelled. We've had like five, we had like five cancellations throughout the whole of the wow. um, pandemic. Yeah, like it was so complicated. But so we kind of decided to just go ahead with that at first and then be patient and wait. And we actually finally had our um, civil ceremony, so our legal ceremony last year, mm -hmm. um, last summer. So yeah, it's been nice. two years and it's been really, really nice. I really enjoyed my Good. I think when you find someone that you genuinely have a good relationship with, like you get along with mm -hmm. and you're, you know, you share the same values um, and you're just on the same level, it can be really beautiful. So, 100%. yeah. Yeah, I have to ask that because obviously we're living in such a treacherous generation yeah. <laughs> in the sense that, so it's like nice to know that people are out here like really yeah. in love and, you know, really, you know, they're getting married and whatever not. Um, and they're actually happy because a lot of things, again, like, you know, on the outside it looks good and they may be in the internet, like, yeah. like oh, obviously no one knows kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, it's true. Do you get it? But that's really, that's, 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 that's good. Yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously, like, you know, never to pressure anybody who, because you never know, like, with relationship, you don't want to rush into something mm -hmm. and then, you know, it's kind of a mistake. But at the same time, I think if you really, like, yeah, if you really found somebody and you just get each other, mm -hmm. I mean, marriage is good. Like, how long does that take, though, in your eyes, do you think? I don't know. Like, I can speak on my experience, but I think everyone's experience is Yeah, different. yeah, no, you're, yeah, you're yeah, so long, you for know. us, like, we knew each other since we were, like, in school okay so we've like been together for a very long time and it's been a very long journey it's been um yeah a lot of learning you have to grow oh, up okay. especially when you're kind of you know teens early 20s yeah, yeah. like there's a lot of personal growth um and i think it's just if you have that faith in like each that other. You, yeah <laughs> each other, yeah then you know you kind of have to just firm firm it yeah, yeah you know um because you do go through a lot of growth and you have to be patient there's a lot of compromise and you just have to learn mm -hmm. how to be with each other mm -hmm. if that makes sense no, as long as there's respect there there's support there mm -hmm. um and you genuinely get along then mm -hmm. friendship is a good foundation if you're really good friends then yeah. I'll be preaching that. <laughs> Friendship first, but you know what? We, again, we live in like a fast generation now where everyone's like, mm, friends, I just wanna, you know, let's go to date and then let's go to, I wanna be with you. And then next thing, by the time you get there, you think, I don't even know who this person is and vice versa. Do you understand? Yeah. So, yeah, no, that's interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah, married life. Yeah. 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 It's, good. it's good for some. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, so, uh, couple more questions and then you know we're going to finish off but um yeah what what keeps you going and like, what's the motivation that you know that drives you what puts that battery in your back um i would say the fact that now i've started there's no going back okay, now okay. like i've put so much time and money and effort into this you know like i've really built something from scratch mm -hmm. um and yeah like i'm not I, I can't like go back and just give up um, and i really believe in I, I've always kind of believed that I'm going to go far in yeah, life, yeah. you know. But say that with chest, though. Yeah, say that with chest, come on, like, if you believe that, say that with yeah, chest. Yeah, I believe yeah. that I will be successful and yeah, I believe yeah. that I will be, Told you know, that. looking mm -hmm. after my family and, Andy. you know, making it and just being really financially comfortable, yeah, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. um, so that's my goal, like, I, I need, especially now, so I need to make money. Yeah, like, yeah. and this is, I've always had an entrepreneurial mindset even from school times mm -hmm. um so that's like my my push like my family as well i really yeah. want to support my family and give back to my family so 100%. yeah yeah i love that still yeah. uh, so for anybody you know coming up same path as you maybe or trying to you know get in get onto what you're doing what's a few tips that you would just tell them um 
Uh, let's talk to the juniors. The juniors, juniors coming up that like, they want, oh. you know, they're interested in this. Like, what would you tell them? Um, in their tender age. I know that actually you overcomplicated it. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say something, but I'm like, oh, it's for juniors. Um, no, no, I mean, in, I mean, general, no, in general, yeah, yeah, yeah in, in general, general. I would general. say. Don't think applies. I would say if you want to like start a business, um, do things properly. I think mm. like make sure that from day one you're doing things the right way. Um, even like if you're making products, for example, if you want to start selling your own products, mm. I can only talk about you know. Um, the products and cosmetics sites, I can't talk about other areas and yeah, fields yeah, yeah, yeah. and legal aspects of that. Mm. But like, do it properly, go down the proper legal routes because you want to you wanna be an example, you want to be shown that you're safe mm -hmm. in what you're doing. Um, I think people, and, and it is a thing where I think some people, they do decide to like start a business and let's say they, they make some creams and they yeah. want to sell it. Mm. And there are certain things that you have to go yeah, through. Yeah, you 100%. have to get your products tested. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. You have to, you know, there's certain things to be, make sure that you are safe because it's your duty for other people. Yeah. You know that yeah, you're yeah. providing to other people. So I would always recommend people to just go down the right. Know what you need to do. Mm -hmm. like, protect yourself, isn't it? Really, you're protecting yeah, protect yourself. yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that way, and in terms of herbal medicine, I would say. Um, I would encourage a lot of people to yeah like learn more about this and go on to proper courses as well like if you wanted to become a herbalist because you can just do like a little weekend course and say oh i'm a herbalist mm. but actually you know if you want to be a qualified herbalist a medical herbalist where you're going to practice you need to do proper courses mm -hmm. and so, you need to get proper accreditation and stuff like that and i think there needs to be more people doing this stuff 100 percent. so is it just courses or would you reckon is it books like there's obviously is there is would you is there like YouTube pages or something that people go to and you hear them speaking about these things and teaching or is it? I mean, it depends if you, uh, on what level that you want to go down. So if you wanted to go down and just to learn, like you, you just want to learn about herbs and stuff mm -hmm. uh, and you just want to have it for personal knowledge and to mm -hmm. incorporate it into your life, there's lots of books mm -hmm. that you can buy um, and it can give you just information about different plants. Um, it can give you uh, recipes and stuff. Yeah, yeah definitely yeah, yeah. like go and look at books um, there are sources online as well. There are like one-off workshops, like things that I do as well. Mm -hmm. You can just book on. But if you wanted to actually like do this as a career, then yeah. there are like proper courses okay. and diplomas and degrees that yeah. you can do. Okay. So yeah. So what do you have like a YouTube channel as well? Or? I don't. Okay. Know. You you thinking? I don't know. I've always like kind of thought about it, but I don't know if I would. I don't know. It's something that I haven't gotten into. I um, think it would be. I think I would do well at it. Yeah, no, I, I think I, I think so. It, to that, just literally that, like, just delivering the information and little things. Like even like it's basically never, never enough technically what you're doing on your Instagram page, but then you just bring it over yeah. to this. Do you understand? Because again, like a lot of things that are quite niche in a sense, there's lack of content, lack of knowledge yeah. out there. So then obviously, you know, you being a pioneer in a sense, like, you know, it yeah. slaps out like there because I'm interested, I'm looking at, I don't know certain things about yeah. this, but I would love to just be able to, oh, let me just go on this page and then, mm, okay, I found out about this now. Same way that you're doing it with mm. the kids in the workshop. Yeah. Little things, you understand that? Like, little things that you wouldn't think that you would want to know. Yeah. Identifying a plant. Yeah. Like my mom started a, on a, um, growing things in the garden. Yeah. Like, like, she would like, oh yeah, the lavender, I will probably walk past the lavender. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, because obviously I'm not a, I don't have the knowledge. Yeah. Do you feel me? So now, nah, but I think... But like, if she's growing all of that stuff, that's it. She has medicine in her garden. 100%, you know? 100%, so. 100% now. Because she knows, obviously, you know, her parents have that cost of living, this exactly. and that, like, things are going up. So obviously, she's got all her lettuce now, her yeah. pumpkins, her oh, tomatoes. You get it, so she's, she's on her thing. That's her thing as well, you get it? So she's on her thing. Yeah, but, that's um, amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's, but even things like that, as to why I asked that, is because then... I could be like, oh yeah, mum, you know, mm. you know, I had a guest on. I would love to do this stuff. I just, even with that Instagram and stuff, like creating content is it's long. Of course. <laughs> it's course, long. Course. Like even just Instagram, like, I struggle because, you know, like the whole marketing and stuff. And I would love to like do YouTube um, and, and like just create more content and mm. info, uh, 
you know, provide more information, yeah. educational stuff, or do series and stuff. Yeah. But it's it, it's a it's a whole other job. Yeah, it, Like it people, is. this is some people's jobs. Yeah. And <laughs> you know, and we, especially as business owners, you have to yeah, do, do fifty thousand jobs. Yes, it would. Yeah. So that's something. But I would just say, don't ever, don't overcomplicate. It. Yeah. In the sense of like, you know, we always think, ah, oh, fuck it, nah. No, it can really be that simple. Just like, nice. yeah, yeah, like literally, like so. Literally, I would say the way that you do it with your junior herbalist, do it exactly the same way because somebody who don't know, that like, doesn't matter what age they are, somebody who doesn't know something, they're going to be taking it in the same way that juniors would. Mm. Do you understand? So you could keep it simple, like, yeah, this is a, this plant, this is how you identify this plant, this way it does, this way it does, boom. Mm. Um, and remember, people's attention spans nowadays is very short. Yes. So you can do little one minute, two minute, info yeah. done, cool. Next one. Yeah. <laughs> one minute, two minutes. You get it. So on my social media, I did do like um, a series like last year, mm -hmm. and it was a um, herbal action of the week. Okay. So sometimes you can characterize um, plants and their act like plants with actions. Mm -hmm. So if you want to have like a uh, a nerving action, so these are plants that have um, an effect on the nervous system. Yeah. They support okay. the nervous system, or you know, um, would they class as psychedelic? No, 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 okay, no, okay, no, okay. no. It it would be more like um, in no. It would is having an effect on the nervous system. So okay. that could be like with helping sleep. It relaxes the nervous system. It relaxes the nerves, okay. or it you know builds. It works on like um, your adrenal glands or something like that, which kind of helps support uh, adapting to stress and stuff like that. Um, so like I was like focusing on different herbal actions and I was kind of like just giving basic information and doing like little stories on Instagram, mm -hmm. talking about expectorants, that's like how, um, herbs that help with like bringing up mucus and helping to, you know, get rid of mucus and clearing the lungs and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. that was really educational and I think people engaged well with that. Yeah. And like that could be something like yeah. YouTube and... That's what I mean, yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah, yeah, but you'll, you know, you'll figure out, but again, like, you know, it's always each one teacher on the garden. So obviously mm -hmm. if I see something that you know, I love and I respect, and I see what someone's doing. I'm always gonna give pointers and tips. You understand that? Mm -hmm. Because it, it makes sense. But we're definitely gonna actually, like, you know, definitely like speak again properly because I'm actually thinking yeah. right now. I think this like, has opened up a whole. Yeah, literally, literally, yeah. because it's like, yeah, I feel like you need to be like, you know, put on a panel in front of an audience. Wow. And just, yeah, no, yeah. no, because. You know what it is? It's like people have information sometimes, but you've had information, you've shared it, you've broken it down as mm -hmm. well, and you're you're like you're telling people what you mean by that. Yeah, mm -hmm. some people be like, yeah, this word. Expecting people to know what that means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're breaking that down. Then oh yeah, so this is for that. So this is for that. Then you go on. So I, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So the way that like, you're very informative, which is good, and this is the knowledge that people need to be informed on. Do you understand? So. Yeah, who works at it anyway? Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, no. so, um, so your uh, website is naturallyuntamed.co.uk, yeah? Okay, yeah. make sure you've got that. We'll put that obviously down in the description and all of that stuff, as well as Naturally Untamed Limited on Instagram. Yes. So yes, um, thanks so much as well. I appreciate you for coming. Thank it's been you. a blessing. It's been amazing. It's been lovely speaking to you. Yes, yeah, thank you thank very you. much. Yeah, so this has been Most Valuable Voice with Jimmy Papes. We out. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.